Hey everyone, Dr. Mike here. Today we're tackling a condition that can be pretty scary. Seizures. We're going to break down everything from the different types of seizures and their symptoms to the causes and the latest treatment options. All right, let's get started. So how do you know if someone is having a seizure? Recognizing the signs can be challenging, but it's crucial for providing timely help. It's not always as dramatic as in the movies. In reality, seizures can be subtle and easily overlooked. Seizures can manifest in many ways and understanding the signs is crucial. They can affect people of all ages and backgrounds, making awareness even more important. Common symptoms include sudden uncontrolled movements such as jerking or twitching of the limbs. These movements can be brief or last several minutes. Staring spells, where a person seems to be lost in thought or unresponsive, are another sign. These can be mistaken for daydreaming or inattention. Auras are warning signs like a weird taste, visual disturbances or intense fear. These sensations often precede a seizure and can serve as an early alert. Less obvious symptoms include confusion, sudden emotional changes or a blank stare. These can be subtle and easily missed, but they are important indicators. Focal seizures might cause twitching in one arm or even just a part of the face. These localized movements can be a sign of a seizure affecting a specific area of the brain. While generalized seizures can cause full body convulsions where the entire body shakes uncontrollably. These are more dramatic and often require immediate medical attention. Tonic-clonic seizures involve stiffening followed by jerking movements. The person may lose consciousness and fall, making it a particularly dangerous type of seizure. Absent seizures might look like daydreaming and are often missed. These brief episodes can happen multiple times a day, affecting a person's ability to concentrate. If you notice unusual behavior that seems like a seizure, seek medical attention. Staying calm is key. Providing accurate information to medical professionals can make a significant difference in the person's care and treatment. Let's dive into what actually causes seizures. Seizures happen when there's a sudden surge of electrical activity in the brain. Causes include underlying medical conditions like epilepsy, brain tumors, or strokes. Infections like meningitis and encephalitis can trigger seizures. Metabolic disturbances such as severe hyperglycemia or electrolyte imbalances are also culprits. Substance-related causes include alcohol withdrawal and drug overdose. Sometimes the cause remains a mystery, known as idiopathic seizures. Genetic factors can make some people more susceptible. Environmental triggers like stress, sleep deprivation and flashing lights can increase the likelihood of seizures. Finding the root cause is crucial for effective treatment. Let's get technical and talk about what's happening in the brain during a seizure. When a seizure occurs, it's like a sudden electrical storm in the brain. This storm is characterized by a burst of uncontrolled electrical activity that disrupts the normal functioning of the brain. A seizure is a sudden burst of uncontrolled electrical activity in the brain. This electrical surge can affect different parts of the brain, leading to a variety of symptoms depending on the area involved. For instance, if the motor cortex is affected, it might result in convulsions or muscle spasms. This disrupts normal communication pathways leading to various symptoms. These symptoms can range from mild, such as brief lapses in attention, to severe, such as prolonged convulsions. The disruption in communication pathways is a key factor in the manifestation of these symptoms. An imbalance between excitation and inhibition in the brain is a key factor. Normally, the brain maintains a delicate balance between excitatory and inhibitory signals. When this balance is disrupted, it can lead to excessive neuronal firing, which is a hallmark of seizures. Ion channel dysfunction can also disrupt normal electrical activity. Ion channels are crucial for maintaining the electrical stability of neurons. When these channels malfunction, it can lead to abnormal electrical discharges, contributing to the occurrence of seizures. Abnormalities in brain networks, like scars from head injuries, can create seizure foci. These foci are areas of the brain where seizures are more likely to originate. Head injuries, infections or developmental abnormalities can all contribute to the formation of these seizure-prone areas. Seizures are caused by a complex interplay of factors. It's not just one thing that leads to a seizure, but rather a combination of various elements. This complexity makes it challenging to predict and manage seizures effectively. This involves an imbalance between excitation and inhibition, 
ion channel dysfunction, and brain network abnormalities. Each of these factors can contribute to the overall likelihood of a seizure occurring. Understanding how they interact is crucial for developing effective treatments. Understanding these factors helps us grasp the complexity of seizures. By studying the underlying mechanisms, researchers can develop better diagnostic tools and treatment options. This knowledge is essential for improving the quality of life for individuals with epilepsy. This knowledge is essential for developing effective treatments. With a deeper understanding of the pathophysiology of seizures, medical professionals can create more targeted and effective treatment plans. This not only helps in managing seizures, but also in potentially reducing their frequency and severity. Let's delve deeper into the common culprits that trigger seizures. Epilepsy is a leading cause, often due to genetic mutations, brain injuries, or brain abnormalities. Brain tumors compress on brain tissue, disrupting normal activity. Strokes can create scarring and abnormal wiring, increasing seizure risk. Infections like meningitis and encephalitis cause inflammation, triggering seizures. Metabolic disturbances such as hypoglycemia and electrolyte imbalances can lead to seizures. Substance abuse, including alcohol withdrawal and drug overdose, is a significant risk factor. High fever in infants and young children can cause febrile seizures. Some people are genetically predisposed to seizures. Understanding these causes helps identify at-risk individuals and guide treatment. Let's explore the various treatment options for managing seizures. Seizures can be a challenging condition to manage, but with the right approach, many people can lead fulfilling lives. Understanding the available options is the first step in taking control of your health. The goal is to reduce or eliminate seizures while minimizing side effects. This often involves a combination of treatments tailored to the individual's needs. A collaborative approach between the patient and healthcare team is crucial for success. Medication is the cornerstone of seizure management. There are many different types of anti-epileptic drugs, AEDs, available, each working in unique ways to control seizures. Your doctor will help determine which medication is best suited for your specific type of seizures. Anti-epileptic drugs, AEDs, alter brain electrical activity to reduce seizures. These medications can be highly effective, but finding the right one can take time. Regular monitoring and adjustments are often necessary to achieve the best results. Finding the right AED and dosage is a highly individualized process. It may involve trying several medications or combinations before finding the most effective regimen with the fewest side effects. Patience and open communication with your healthcare provider are key. For drug-resistant epilepsy, surgery may be an option. Surgical procedures aim to remove or alter the area of the brain where seizures originate. This can be a highly effective treatment for some patients, offering a significant reduction in seizure frequency or even complete seizure freedom. Vagus nerve stimulation, VNS, involves a device that sends electrical impulses to the vagus nerve. This can help reduce the frequency and severity of seizures. VNS is often considered when medications alone are not sufficient and it can be used in combination with other treatments. The ketogenic diet, high in fat and low in carbs, can reduce seizure activity. This diet alters the body's metabolism, leading to the production of ketones, which have been shown to have anticonvulsant effects. Working with a nutritionist is essential to ensure the diet is followed correctly and safely. Emergency management is crucial for prolonged seizures known as status epilepticus. Immediate medical intervention is necessary to prevent long-term damage or complications. Having an emergency plan in place and knowing when to seek help can be life-saving. Lifestyle modifications like adequate sleep and stress management are essential for optimal seizure control. Regular exercise, a balanced diet, and avoiding triggers such as alcohol and stress can make a significant difference. Incorporating relaxation techniques like yoga and meditation can also help manage stress and improve overall well-being. Living with seizures can be challenging, but with the right strategies and support, individuals can lead full lives. Medication adherence is crucial for maintaining seizure control. Lifestyle modifications like regular sleep and stress management are important. Regular follow-up appointments with healthcare providers are essential. Social support through support groups or online communities can reduce feelings of isolation. 
Educating family and friends about seizures creates a supportive environment. Driving restrictions ensure public safety. Pregnancy planning requires special considerations for women with seizures. Living with seizures can be a journey, but with knowledge and support, individuals can achieve their full potential. Proactive management is key to a fulfilling life. That was a lot of information, but I hope you found it helpful. Understanding seizures can make a world of difference in managing the condition. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more health insights. Stay informed and take care.